This lesson we want to dedicate to the most cunning of tankers, those who love nothing more than to find a good hiding spot in any map, put an SPG in there and take out unaware enemies with impunity, all the while reading whales and curses of their unlucky targets. This is especially true in realistic and simulator modes, when there's no magical green crosshairs that can find any target even behind bushes and trees. Why, of course, nothing is stopping some lazy tanker with a T-34 to do the same, but let's be honest, medium tanks are so much better on the attack. Tank sniping is best used by those players who get the best guns mounted on SPGs. This tutorial is for you, the patient and the ruthless SPG player. Today we're gonna talk about all the best vantage points. Let's start with Ash River. At Sector C8 there's a hill that has good coverage of the C point down below. There you can assume a good position behind rocks and shoot at anything moving towards the point and fall back behind cover if necessary. Our spawn point is close too, so our flank should be covered. You can actually shoot right from C9, though you won't be able to control your right flank as good from there. The opposite team has a good position to counter this spot from B3. It too has some open space on the right, but it offers a well-protected rear approach. Long-range SPGs can barrage point A from there, but they can also get some return fire from their counterparts at A point. There is also a rather good but seldom used position at F2. It has good coverage of the B point, the planes around it and even the enemy spawn. Why is it so often neglected by snipers? Because it is wide open, use it with caution. Now let's take a look at another interesting vantage point at Ash River. Two opposite openings in the rocks at G3 and G8. These are best occupied by heavy tanks such as the German Tiger because you will have major difficulties aiming through this gap in the rocks without a rotating turret. On the other hand, this position offers a good command over approaches towards the A point, while at the same time providing solid rock cover to your flanks and extra protection from the rear thanks to the nearby spawn point. The J3 sector is good for controlling the A point. You peek out from behind a rock, take a shot and then hide, probably infuriating opposing tanks. The counter position to J3 is located in J6, but here you must be careful with your flanks. You can easily be taken from your left while you're sniping the front. Finally, there's a good spot in G9. If your spawn is on the left, it is an ideal position to shoot at the enemy base and at the passage located at G8. If you're comploted up close, however, you will be cornered, as this position offers no ways of escape. It is right there, up close to the enemy, after all. Now, let's move on to Corellia, sector G10. From here you have a good view of the opposite side of the crevice and the entrance to the spawn. If you can react quickly enough to the outgoing enemies, you have all the chances of scoring a bunch of easy frags. The counter position to this one is at E9. Next up is G6. Get off the road and climb the small hill. From here you will have a good view of the nearby capture point and the enemy base. Take note of the hill at the intersection of four sectors, H3, H4, J3 and J4. It has good coverage of the plane below and positions at the central hill. This good coverage though is compensated by a lack of any meaningful cover, so be careful. There is yet another spot, seldom used, which is located at E1. Just climb the hill next to the nearby flanking road. If you can get there before your enemy, you will be able to control the enemy base and prevent them from capturing points on the map. If you push even further, you can attack the enemy's rear and engage all the respawning enemies. Another position is located in C4 and gives you a good spot to shoot at tanks going for the capture point. From here you can clearly see the bunker and roads for flank attacks, though you need to constantly keep an eye out on your rear as your enemies can easily reach your position from their base. Very few players know this, but if you follow along B sectors and tank with a turret, you can plant a nasty surprise for your enemy. There's a good road that you can use to get to either western or eastern spawn points, and you can shoot enemies along the way who are attempting to outflank. When you reach the end of the road, you can wreak havoc inside the enemy base. The central hill on this map is yet another good vantage point. It offers good view, but will be difficult to hold itself. If you positively decide to hold it, no matter what, you will need a sizable group with you, a couple of SPGs covered by a couple of tanks. Moving on to... Jungle! Here snipers will be hard pressed to find any decent spot to take, as the entire map is covered in large plants. Though there are a couple of good spots even here though. 
the heal at sector H3. From here, you can shoot at the enemy base from either side, plus you can cover the nearby capture point A. But if you want to shoot from this perch, you will have to lower your gun quite low, a feat that is not available to all tanks. Or you can peek out with most of your hull, which is quite clearly rather dangerous. Next up is the hill at sector D6. From here, you will have a commanding view of the beach, though you will have to move a bit to be able to engage the enemy base and most of the capture points. To be honest, this hill can be used to cover more than half of the entire map. The most important thing here is to never allow the enemy to get close to you. The sectors that host the sea capture point E7 and E8 can also be used as vantage points, but all the available cover here is rather bad, so don't stay there for too long. Kuban, this map somewhat resembles jungle. In other words, not too much sniping here. The abundance of hills makes this terrain rather difficult. There are basically a couple of vantage points across the entire map. Try to hill at sector I-8. It offers a good view of almost the entire map. You can, at the very least, mark the targets for your allies and punish the enemy tankers rushing towards the capture point. Another decent spot is at sector E8. The position here is somewhat similar to the previous one, but offers even more possible venues of attack. You can cause quite a stir from sector E11 as well. From here, you see the field clear as day, which is often occupied by impatient enemy tankers. The average distance to them is about 800 meters, but if you're a good shot, you will be easily able to hit them. Finally, we have Carpathians. Here we have three major sniping positions, or otherwise called vantage points that oppose each other in battle. The castle in the center, which battlements can provide both cover and good view, and two lines of boulders and hills that make up a sort of a fortress at sectors H5, H6 and D8, E8. So basically all the players that end up in the pocket down below will most likely be annihilated by the snipers from up above, at which point the game turns into a contest of patience between snipers, which sometimes can be quite dull. Oh, we almost forgot, there's also Kursk, but uh, no. The entire Kursk is one big wide open map. No clever roads here, no crevices, no solid cover. Here, you must rely on your accuracy, reaction speed, and our previous tutorials. Good luck in the war.